Let's continue on with part three of common law present and future interests and take a closer look to vested remainders. Specifically, let's look at vested remainders that are subject to divestment. So I'm going to write the very top here, the title. I'm just going to write vested remainder. And in green, I'm going to put subject to divestment. And I wrote it in green because I think in the following example, it'll be, it'll be a little more straightforward to see the divesting language if I write it in green. So we're going to piggyback off our previous example, but add an additional interest. So we're going to have A, B, C, and D. And B will have a life estate. And then C will have a vested remainder. So I'm going to add the vested remainder language to C. So to B for life, then to C. I'm going to underline that because that's the vested remainder. But we want an example of vested remainder subject to divestment. So C must have some type of divesting language or potentially divesting language. So let's say, let's add an example of a potential divestment, but if C does not move to Los Angeles, then to D. And you can see that our example reads as follows. To B for life, then to C, but if C does not move to LA, then to D. And so you can see that in this, that C has a vested remainder subject to divestment because it's vested, then to C, and it's subject to the possibility of divestment if C does not move to LA. And I think. If we look at this example too, we can see an additional interest that we have yet to talk about, but we're going to talk about in a later video, and that is D's interest. And I know that when I first saw these examples when I was in school, I would have automatically jumped and said, oh, well, D also has a contingent remainder, but that's not true. So I'm going to write that down here in red. No contingent remainder. And I'm actually going to box this because I think this is a trick that a lot of people fall for. And what it's, what's important to note is that D does not have a contingent remainder because D only takes, I'm going to put this in baby blue, if C divests. I'm going to put this. That way we can see. So... I'm going to say divest, must divest. And actually, we should probably put it, we should probably remove this arrow. And then say, for D to take, C must divest. And so what is this an example of? Now I'm going to put this in, let's say, orange. D, and I'm going to circle D, D actually has an, execu an executory interest. And I actually stumbled there in saying executory because D actually has a shifting executory interest. But there's lots of different types of executory interest. So for now, I think it's just important to know that's an executory interest. And I'll talk about that in the next video that follows up. Uh, actually, I think it's going to be two videos from now in part five of common law present and future interests. Uh, part four will be vested remainder subject to open. So if you're interested in that, please keep listening um, and watch the next video.